So welcome for the last talk today. The last talk today is a remote talk by Arna Lee about localization as an inclusion and participatory enabler research. Hello and kumusta everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the State of the Map 2022 organizers, sponsors, volunteers and participants for making this conference possible. I may not be there in person this time, but I'm here with you online and I really appreciate you um, attending my talk. I know we've been uh, watching or yeah, watching pre-recorded talks for the past 2.5 years, but here you are uh, watching another pre-recorded talk. So yeah, really do appreciate it. And later I'll be with you online to answer questions. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Arna Lee and I've been a contributor uh, from OSM Philipp Philippines uh, since 2016. I love mapping, I love OpenStreetMap, I love OpenStreetMap local communities because they're really inspiring. And as a result of that, in 2020, I shifted from being a JS specialist into online community engagement. And I now work as the online community engagement lead for the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. I come from the Southwest, where the Pacific lies in the beautiful Philippine archipelago. And I'm joining you from the West now, uh, where the Rocky Mountains are in the United States. So traveling and working in an international environment, this required lots of adjustment, not just the adjustment in place. There's also adjustment in time, the food, the environment, also the language and many other things. For my airtime here, I'd like to talk about language Although we're not talking about maps, we'll talk about language and the uh, OpenStreetMap community. So this Sofia Vergara pretty much sums up how people in a certain language feel or struggle with, for example, when I uh, speak English. So uh, personally, yeah, this is what a struggle for me joining uh, OpenStreetMap or participating to OpenStreetMap and also uh, working at HOT. Actually, composing a written reply with two to three sentences usually takes me on average five minutes, and it's much more pressure when it's uh, live like this. So, yeah, uh, sometimes I really do uh, prepare a script when presenting. So, yeah, this personal struggle led me to propose language barrier as a topic in one of our uh, staff discussions to test my assumption if this barrier exists in OpenStreetMap in HAT and beyond. And this actually turned out to be one of the most popular and active discussion topics, and we had the most and most diverse discussion speakers. And it wasn't hard to find a speakers for this topic. And so with the support of my colleagues, I proposed and uh, made it into a project. So yeah, successes and failures of the project. Coined or yeah, coined by my colleague Ruben Martin, localization as inclusion and participatory enabler. But yeah, before everything, I'd like to take this opportunity as well to acknowledge our community contributors and collaborators who took part in this project, as well as my colleagues who I've been uh, consulting with and been my support throughout this project. So thank you for our local contributors from three different countries and communities, OpenStreetMap Vietnam, uh, Hui, uh, Tony, and the Map Operations team. Also, Faneva, Dali uh, from Madagascar community, Rodolf, uh, Pacheco, Dinersha, Edmilson, Daniel, Emerson, Rosario, Vanya from OpenStreetMap Mozambique. Also, hot working groups, the community training and activation working groups, the open mapping hubs from Asia Pacific, is and Eastern and Southern Africa, also my colleagues from HAT community team and HAT tech team and weekly OSM contributors for the learning station. Thank you, thank you very much. So yeah, to add a little more context in addition to Sophia Vergara, JF, uh, I really like this statement from uh, my colleague Ivan. So I'll give you a minute to read the statement. So yeah, it's not just an individual or collective disadvantage. Language barrier is real. It's a systematic disadvantage for people who are not native in speaking a certain language. And yes, this 
uh, from our contributors about the challenges of languages uh, from their experiences. So one uh, was finding it hard to apply for a job. One passed our invita invitation because uh, the event will be in English and they don't, they can't speak in English. And also, yeah, I really like this uh, testimonials from uh, Dido that, yeah, participating in meetings, there are, maybe there are exceptional opinions from all of the participants, but yeah, they can share it because of the language barrier. So I made some assumptions. Why should we address language barrier and how? And I believe we can do that through language localization as a first step. So addressing language localization, addressing language barrier through localization will first uh, reduce the stigma because some countries uh, believe or they, they have the culture that uh, English uh, fluency to, with English or European languages is perceived as lack of intelligence or competence and also uh, reduce the lack of confidence that local communities feel when you communicate and engage with them. Uh, second one, uh, we believe that localization will encourage and enable access and usage of our resources and also participation in our activities such as training, uh, open dialogue, chats, and all that stuff. And the third one, and I think the most, uh, you know, the, the most ultimate goal is that uh, localization will lead a be better relationship with uh, the local community. So uh, this testimonial here, uh, they said that it can uh, give them that global feeling of being included and invited to take part. So some goals and processes, uh, we focus on three languages uh, from our collaborators. Uh, so Tiang Vet or Vietnamese, French for Madagascar, Portuguese for Mozambique. And we ident help them identify the top to priority uh, resources that they want to uh, translate that will give value to their community. And all of this, the ultimate goal was to uh, provide insights to build a self-sustainable localization strategy. And we, we also plan to collaborate with translation groups, with global translation groups. And to uh, give you uh, the results of the project, actually, we were able to do uh, focus uh, translate documents uh, for the three languages, but uh, the findings of the project was not sufficient to create a self-sustainable localization strategy. And so uh, we recommend incorporating some of the actions and opportunities for future localization projects. But before that, let me uh, let let me share with you um, some of the findings or successes of the project. So yeah, uh, we have identified or we have uh, translated and identified at least one resource and also uh, shared shared publicly. It's all in the OpenStreetMap uh, wiki. Uh, we had the two step. Uh, translation workflow and it worked for uh, the French and uh, Portuguese translation and I'll let you know more uh, about that later about the translation work workflow sorry and so yeah uh, collaborations uh, from the contributors and partners are overall um, strengthened uh, this is uh, our two-step uh, translation uh, workflow we do not have the same uh, system like weekly OSM, but yeah, this is just a very simple uh, translation workflow. So yeah, contributors do not have to um, translate it in, in scratch. So we research and use an accurate machine translator tool for those uh, languages. Uh, we found DeepL to be very accurate in translating Portuguese and French, but for Tiang Vet or Vietnam, since uh, Vietnamese, since we don't have uh, a machine translation translation tool that is accurate enough for it, we collaborated with the Grab Vietnam team to do the initial translation. And then the step two after uh, doing that is to uh, for the collaborators to review the resource. So yeah, goal of 
providing a self-sustainable localization strategy as we, you know, experience challenge. And we still learned a lot from this project. And there are opportunities that we can take and recommend in case anyone here would like to do a similar research. So here are uh, so to share with you. Uh, first one, as I've mentioned earlier, for some language, there are no accurate machine translator. In our case, Vietnamese, we don't, we don't know, or we haven't found an accurate machine translator. So what we did, we collaborate with our existing networks. In our case, uh, through the help of AP Asia Pacific Community Manager, Miko Tamura, we were able to collaborate with the Grab Vietnam Map Operations Team. So yeah, this is an opportunity uh, for international organizations like HOT or OSM to act as connector for local communities and the private sector to collaborate, uh, for example, with the language localization project. So another challenge is that we were not able to provide a list of available resources. And yeah, the collaborators were asking for it. So the opportunity here is yeah, to maintain a list of available resources to translate to help contributors target resources that will be valuable uh, to their community. Uh, third challenge, uh, we translated a resource that cannot be used in the future. In our case, we translated the uh, Eastern and Southern Africa Open Mapping Hub Open Mapping Grant, but then it turned out they uh, they change the procedures to apply for the open mapping grant. So the opportunity here or the recommendation is that to focus on evergreen or evolving resources that can be translated in a channel that is open and also accessible for contributors to translate. So yeah, not just one time resource that will be used, but yeah, a, con a sustainable resource that will be potentially used uh, by others uh, to provide more value to the process of translation and also uh, to the collaborators. Uh, fourth one, technical barrier. So yeah, you know that uh, which uh, one uh, community wanted to wanted to translate a resource from a tool that uh, have a technical um, system on it. But yeah, uh, since uh, I gave them the instruction and everything, but then uh, they were not able to push through for it. And I think yeah, uh, the the main challenge there was we were not able to provide onboarding and the use of the translation tool. So yeah, uh, if you are gonna collaborate with uh, communities or you know people uh, for translation, you should give them an onboarding on how to use the translation tool because often. We overlook uh, because we know how how the system works. We overlook it, and yeah, we were not able to onboard them to the tool. Another one is uh, time commitment. Although collaborators have expressed their commitment, uh, it also took time to review the resources. So opportunities here is yeah, again, uh, provide value and recognition to uh, contributors. Another challenge is that we, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we were not able to collaborate with a translator group. So we recommend for future uh, projects to identify spaces for collabor collaboration early in the project phase. Uh, and then the last one that uh, really uh, was a learning for me uh, the challenge was that there was no concrete plan on how to measure impact of localized translation to the communities. So, in return, the effect or impact of the translated resources to the communities were not monitored. So, yeah, uh, if ever I will do another project, not not only for language localization, uh, I am. I will really do, and I can encourage you all to have a rob robust approach to evaluating impact plans and uh, this also should be aligned with your organization's monitoring evaluation and re research uh, approach so yeah uh, 
reach our ultimate goal, but we did learn and are happy to give you uh, or to share with you those uh, learnings that we have. And yeah, this project uh, closed, but yeah, there's another uh, windows of opportunity. And to leave you, um, this, this one from my colleague, former colleague, Lily, uh, she said that translation and accessibility take time, planning, and patience. So it if we want to reach more local communities in OpenStreetMap, in open mapping or open data, we need to try or we have to try harder to create those environments in which people uh, in this community can can engage in a way in ways that is sensitive to their context. So yeah, let's continue to break those barriers and yeah, uh, thank you. These are just some of the resources and documents. Uh, these are all up uploaded uh, in Pretalics and you can check it. And yeah, thank you again for being with me. And yeah, shout out again to my collaborators. Thank you all so much for listening. So welcome to the Q&A session of Anneli's talk. Thank you, Anneli, for your video talk. Um, please ask questions using the venue less question tab. So far, I don't see any questions. So let me ask the first question. What kind of resources did you and your team translate? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, it, it actually depends on the local contributors, uh, Vietnam, Madagascar, and Mozambique. So for Vietnam, they, the resource they, uh, they prioritize uh, translating is, the, of course, the Vietnamese tagging guidelines in uh, OSM Wiki. So we all documented it there, even other than uh, Hui and Tony, who are our primary collaborators there. Uh, other uh, people from Viet Vietnam also, you know, chime in, uh, uh, also try to uh, give, to provide translations and, uh, yeah, provide also guidelines. And with Mozambique and uh, Madagascar, uh, they, they were very, um, they translated the uh, uh, Eastern and Southern Africa a hub open mapping grants, but yeah, as I've, I've said in the um, video uh, earlier, uh, it, it was it eventually was not used uh, in the future grant. So, yeah, an opportunity there is yeah we should translate or focus on more uh, evergreen resources that is evolving and also uh, putting it in a channel that is uh, accessible for everyone to also contribute. I have another question from the audience how to how how do you plan to keep translated resources up to date yeah so that's also like uh one of the underlying um uh, goal of the, of the of the project you know like that's why we collaborated with this community is because we also uh hope that they will be the one who will uh, sustain it, uh, sustain the resources. For example, in Vietnam, uh, I see that uh, we have a very good collaboration uh, with the OSM Vietnam team. A shout out again to Hui and Tony. And yeah, I still see some uh, updates in the uh, OSM Wiki. So yeah, uh, uh, the same uh, kind of system with OpenStreetMap, everyone is free to contribute. That's why we uh, put it in a, a an accessible uh, platform, which is the OpenStreetMap Wiki. We have another question from the audience. Um, you mentioned further work on this topic. Can you give us a hint about what you are thinking of doing next? Yes, uh, I think uh, for now, uh, it's uh, unfortunately not one of my priority, but I, I will still advocate for it. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, hoping to collaborate more with op the open mapping hubs uh, because they have like targeted um, targeted languages that you know they want to translate or they want to localize uh, in their community. So yeah, I'm hoping uh, one maybe yeah one of the open mapping hubs or one of the countries uh, or local community can reach out to us uh, and yeah we will uh, surely 
uh, help or do our best to help them. Another question from the audience. During translation, did you encounter any problematic text that need adoption to fit the local reality? Yeah, um, yes, actually. Uh, what one so uh, we did not have any accurate machine translate translation uh, in Vietnam. So, yeah, what we did is we we tried we tried you know Google Translate, Microsoft Translate, but it doesn't really give an accurate uh, accurate translation. So yeah, we took uh, we took effort to um, partner with uh, a local. Uh, sector here uh, with the help of uh, a community manager, uh, Miko Temura. So yeah, th that's our like way around in those. But uh, I'm I'm very happy with DeepL results. Uh, they are very specialized in languages. So yeah, uh, I encourage everyone to check out Deep, DeepL. They have a free version. Uh, but yeah, only a few or specialized languages are available. From my experience within weekly OSM, I can agree that deep L results are better than Google Translate. Yeah. So yeah. we are at, we are at the end of the Q and A session. Thank you, Anneli, for participating. Thank, Thank you for you the audience, everyone. for your attention.